So you're running the new PvP mode and you can't stop. One more game, you tell yourself, and before you know it, it's 6 a.m. and the sun is out. Luckily for you, you can game without glare with Sun Zero Blackout Curtains. Learn more at sunzero.com or follow the link in the description below. Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the Minstrel's Ballad and Singer's Aria. This is the brand new extreme trial made available by patch 6.1 in Final Fantasy XIV Newfound Adventure. This guide is out of this world and will set you on a collision course with victory. Party Finder will be singing your praises and I can't wait for you to tell us all about it. My name is Mystech and I'll be your trial guide. Throughout the encounter, the boss will target the top two enmity targets for spicy auto attacks. As such, both tanks should ensure they are enmity targets targets 1 and 2 at all times. Elegea Unforgotten will deal raid-wide damage and form a pair of orange or blue planets around the arena. At the same time, an Endsinger ad will appear in the center of the arena, facing a specific direction. This ad will target the entire half of the platform in front of her for a high damage attack, and players must stay in the half of the platform behind her to avoid getting hit. The planets that form around the edge will begin to move counterclockwise, with one moving quickly around the edge while the other one moves slowly, causing them to eventually collide. Regardless of where they spawn, planets will always collide at the first intercardinal point counterclockwise to where the slower planets spawned. Orange planets will form a massive point blank AoE explosions from the intercardinal point where they collide. Blue planets will deal a massive knockback from the intercardinal point of collision. As such, players will need to pre-position based on the color of the planets, which intercardinal point the collision is happening on, and which way the extra head in the center of the room is facing. For orange planet collisions, players will need to run opposite the collision point to avoid the massive circle attack. As they do this, they'll need to make sure they're behind the ad in the center to avoid getting hit by her blast. For blue planet collisions, players will run to the intercardinal point of collision and position themselves to get knocked back behind the ad in the center without also getting knocked off the platform. When the boss casts Catastrophe Small, eight meteor circles will form over the platform. These circles require one player to soak them, or they will explode and deal high damage and debuffs. At the same time, the boss will cast Grip of Despair, and a tank or healer will be chained to a damage dealer. To handle this combo, all players can stack in the center as the chains are forming. Once they're out, all tanks and healers run towards the west side of the room, while all damage dealers run east until the chains are broken. From there, the tanks and healers will soak the circles on the west, while the damage dealers soak the circles on the east. During this time, the boss will be casting Elenkos, and players will have to pay close attention to her face. If her mouth is open and glowing, players will need to move out of the center of the room as they soak their puddles. If she has glowing tears streaming down her cheeks, players will need to soak their puddles towards the middle of the room, away from the outer edges. Once the meteor circles are soaked, they will disappear. Telus will deal high raid-wide damage. Healers be ready. Hubris will target the first and second and mini targets for heavy-hitting tank busters that also deal wide splash damage around them. The two tanks will need to take these hits with cooldowns away from the rest of the raid. During the next Elegea Unforgotten Planet smooshing and face dodging, the two healers will be targeted for stack up markers. To handle this, we split the raid group into two and assign each player to stack with a specific healer anytime this mechanic occurs. The boss will then cast Fatalism, recreating two sets of planet collisions. Players will need to be on the lookout for which set of planets forms first, and quickly identify what color they are and where their collision will occur before adjusting appropriately. There's no center head add to dodge here, so it's just a matter of running to the appropriate intercardinal point. After the first reformed collision occurs, players will then need to immediately adjust for the second reform collision. These double reformed collisions will immediately be followed by another Elenkos cast, and players will need to look at the boss's face and adjust in or out of the center appropriately. Next up, Twin Song of Porhoya will spawn five adds around the arena, one in the center and one at each intercardinal. The ad in the center will again target the entire room in front of her for damage, while the adds on the outside will cast alternating point blank AoEs or donut attacks. Each round of attacks is recorded by the boss for a future mechanic. To handle this, players will first need to identify the direction of the center head and move behind her into the ad casting the donut attack. All of these attacks will then rotate clockwise and the raid can move clockwise as well to stay inside the safe donut attack. After three rotations, the boss will cast Theological Fatalism and each ad will have either a single ring, a double ring, or three rings around it. The rings around each ad signify the number of rounds or recordings the ad will rewind back to. For example, a single ring will have the ad casting her last attack 
while three rings will have the ad casting her first attack. This is a mechanic that can quickly and easily confuse players, so let's break it down to the fundamentals. Before the rings form around each ad, the group is moving around the outer ads inside the safe donut attack behind the center head. It's important for all players to understand that the first set of donut attacks is positionally identical to the third set of donut attacks. Once the third attack goes out, make a mental note of which two way markers the two donut attacks ended up on. Once the rewind rings come out, look at the middle ad first and identify which direction she'll be facing based on the number of rings around her. One ring will have her facing in the same direction she already is, two will turn her once counterclockwise, while three will turn her 180 degrees. Once you know which direction the center face will be casting, you can move behind her. Now it's just a matter of finding the ad that will cast the donut attack, as this will be the only safe spot for the raid to stand in. To do this, you'll need to remember where the last set of donut attacks landed. As mentioned earlier, this positioning is correct for the third and first position of donut attacks, meaning any outer ad with an odd number of rings behind the attack of the center head will be safe. If there is no ad with an odd number of rings behind the center head, then the group will need to move on to the ad with two rings around it. This mechanic is very confusing at first and will take some practice to fully understand. Each player has a different way of thinking about this that works for them, but as long as you understand the fundamentals, you'll figure it out for yourself in no time. Immediately after this combo, the two healers will be targeted for stack up again while the boss casts Elenkos again. Stack with your healer in the appropriate spot to avoid death. Another round of tank busters to heal through before the boss casts Despair Unforgotten. This attack will mark up all players with specific markers that must be positioned appropriately to avoid death. There are three rounds of attacks, so let's look at each possible combo. This combo has all players marked with large AoE circles. For this, simply have players spread to assign positions around the arena to avoid overlap. In this combo, four players are marked for flare markers that must be spread apart to avoid excess damage. Three players are marked for large donut attacks, and one player is marked for stack up. To handle this combo, we have all the flare players run to assign cardinal points on the edge of the platform, while the donuts and stack up markers stand in the exact center of the room. This combo will repeat, with the original flares now marked by donuts or stack up, and vice versa. The order of the combos and which marker each player gets is random, however each player can expect to always have one donut or stack, one circle attack, and one flare in a random order. To simplify this, each player will stack in the center once and move to their assigned edge twice, in a random order that they'll need to remember for themselves. The boss will cast two rounds of despair unforgotten before another Elenkos. After players position for the second round of despair, they'll need to dodge Elenkos appropriately before getting ready for the final round of despair. The boss will then cast Theological Fatalism and all players will be marked with one, two, or three rings. Similar to the head adds earlier, each player will replay the attack that targeted them based on the round indicated by the number of rings around them. Again, a single ring means that they will replay the last round, two rings will replay the second round, while three rings indicates they will replay the first round. Based on their rings and what mechanic targeted them in the corresponding round, players will then move Move to their assigned positions to handle the attack replays. The boss will then cast Telomania and deal multiple hits of massive raid wide damage before one final hit that applies a bleed debuff on all players. Shield and cooldown as necessary. End Song Zippor Hoya will spawn six adds around the outer edge of the arena. The boss will then cast End Song and four rings will fly from her mouth towards four random adds. The adds hit by these rings will then explode in wide circles. Players will need to look at the rings as they fly to each ad and move away from these adds to avoid getting hit. These rings will continue to fly to random adds and players will have to move into the safe zones away from the affected adds. An easy way to do this is to reposition in the center as the rings start to fly around so you can clearly see where they're heading before you move into safety. After the third round of explosions, the boss will begin to cast Elenkos again and players will need to adjust in or out of the center as necessary. Another Telus raid wide blast to heal through followed by another double tank buster. The boss will cast Elegea Unforgotten and players will again need to adjust for the planet collision while dodging the center head. This is immediately followed by another healer stack, so be ready in your split groups. Next up, the boss will cast two rounds of fatalism, and the group will need to dodge four planet collisions appropriately. Each collision round will always have the same color planets, and it's a matter of bouncing between the appropriate intercardinal points. After all four collisions occur, another round of soak circles will form, and players will need to quickly move into their assigned circles while also watching for the Elenkos cast from the boss. Another round of Telomania raid wide damage and bleeds to cooldown and heal through. Healers beware. At this point, all of the mechanic combos will repeat until she begins her enrage where she casts one final fatalism, forms a giant planet thingy, and dunks on you. You'll need to destroy her before this time or you will die. If you have any questions or comments, please leave
please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. See you in Ultimate. Till next time.